see there's a, a tiny metal strip in here. Um, that's a, there's a little chip in the middle of it that has an ID number. Um, these particular type of tags, this is the, the RFID tag that's in use uh, by Walmart. Uh, they're making quite extensive use of it in their, their, their pallet level for tracking inventory. They're considering deploying it wider to a, a you know, per item so that you'll have a unique RFID tag per, per size, style, color, every item in the store. Uh, it's also the same technology that's used in the uh, United States passport card. Not the book, the book is different. This is just the card that's, that's good for, for travel in North America. Um, it's also the same tag that's being issued in the enhanced driver's license that's present, that's, that's being issued in several states. So this technology is called EPC Generation 2. Um, it's uh, very different than traditional RFID systems. Most RFID systems, you have a coil of wire in the reader, you have a coil of wire in the tag, the two couple together and they exchange data through a magnetic field. This system is much closer to radar. So if you look at this as a radar system, and you can uh, look at scaling the range of it in accordance with the radar range equation and by increasing power and antenna gain and, and things like this. So that's, that's essentially what I'm doing here. I'm treating this RFID tag as a radar transponder and I've scaled up all of my, my equipment from, you know, from the commercial reader um, side. I'm operating under a ham radio license at the moment, so I've got a bunch of equipment here that I'll, I'll talk you through in just a second as to you know, how I'm doing that legally. But yeah, it's, it's, it's an RFID tag, it's called RFID, but in reality it's much closer to a radar IFF transponder. Could you try to put that into terms that maybe a more general audience can understand? Just um, what, basically, what are you doing? Reading RFID at very long ranges. And RFID is? Uh, it's these little wireless transponders that can be embedded in the game. They're embedded in, in product labels or Walmart. They're in your ID if you're in a, a state that issues these enhanced driver's licenses. Uh, it's getting more and more prevalent all over the place. These things are really taking off in, in all facets of life. So you're going to listen to what? I'm going to actually be reading these things. So each of these tags, I don't know if you, you saw the ones that I handed out, they each have a unique serial number on them. Um, they've all been programmed with a unique number. Um, and uh, hopefully if I get someone down there with a uh, with a, a handful of these to, to hold up one at a time. We can see which one it is um, and we can read them from this equipment. Certainly I've, I've read these tags from 217 feet. Um, I believe it's capable of a lot more. So we're up here today to try and uh, read RFID tags off the balcony. Um, obviously we're you know, quite high up with what, 30 stories up, something like that. Um, and then you know, obviously a little further out there. So some quite significant distance to be able to you know, figure out who it is that, that, that that's down there, read the, the serial number from their ID card, um, you know, maybe you find out what products they've been buying. Um, if they you know, didn't take the tags off when they bought their clothes at Walmart, you can tell what color underwear they're wearing. But it's, it's pretty invasive technology, um, especially when you factor in the, the, the distances that you can read these things at. Does that answer your question? And why, why would you want to do this? To prove that it can be done, because most people hear, hear the phrase RFID and they think of the, 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 the coils of wire um, and, and those things they can only be read at a few inches so traditional RFID is a very short range system this is a very long range system and in my opinion and, and the opinion of, of many people um, it's entirely inappropriate to be putting these things in identity documents um, I can actually give you all quotes from uh, organizations like the American Electronics Association the Smart Card Alliance Department of Homeland Security, Data Privacy and Integrity Advisory Committee. Even Hillary Clinton, when she was a senator, wrote a letter to the, the, the Department of State and said, this is the wrong technology to be putting in identity documents. So I'm here today to, to, to prove that, to prove that these things can be read at very long distances. People can be tracked, they can be identified, you can find out all kinds of information about them from these RFID tags that are being issued to you by the government, by stores, in products you buy, all over the place. Okay, so let me give you a quick guided tour of the equipment here. So, first off, um, standard laptop. Um, it's running a, a very minimal Linux distribution. The software that I'm using, um, it's very sensitive to, to how fast it operates. So, very, very cut down operating system. Absolute bare bones, you know, minimal Linux system. Um, this black box here, um, this is called the Universal Software Radio Peripheral. Now what this does is um, it accepts data from the PC, 
over this USB cable and effectively the PC does all the work of computing what the, the, the radio waveform should look like, what it is that should actually be coming out of the antenna. And it does all the number crunching, sends it over USB to the USRP, and then the USRP sends it out to the antennas. And then vice versa for the, for the receive signal. Um, once we come out of the USRP, um, obviously, uh, you know, the, the, the protocol that I'm running, um, EPC generation two, um, it's not, out, it's on its own, it's not compliant with ham radio regulations. So what I actually need to do is uh, identify my transmission by, by sending a second transmission on top of it. And that's what this thing does. This is, this is a device called an IMB. Uh, it's a, 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 a big favorite among hardware hackers um, because it's, uh, it's quite a flexible radio in there. Um, it's capable of very wide frequency operation. Um, obviously keypad and screen doesn't hurt. Um, and they're, they're, they're very popular because there's no firmware security. It's very easy to reprogram them. So what I've done with this one is I've put new firmware on here so that um, every eight minutes, this sends out a Morse coded transmission with my ham radio call sign. So I can actually show you what that sounds like. Um, if I start the RFID reader, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm going to be the gopher. How many of these do you want me to bring down? Um, just a couple. Half a dozen or so. Okay. And um, Nico has my cell phone number, okay. so if we need to call or whatever. Okay. So this is just a, a normal ham radio receiver. Um, I've got it tuned to the, the frequency that I'm, I'm transmitting on here. And if I turn my volume up here, and if you can hear that clicking sound, that clicking sound is, is the transmissions from my USRP. Each click is an attempt to read a tag. So you can see it's, it's trying to read tags you know, quite a few times a second. It's very, very fast. It doesn't take very long to read these tags. And then if I push a button on the IM me, and that's my, my, my ham radio call sign. So, that's how I'm, I'm complying with ham radio regulations and, and, and operating as a, a, a ham radio station. So are you essentially bundling the ham radio signals? What are you doing with the it's, ham radio? Essentially what I'm doing is, um, in order to, to operate at high power levels and with you know, big power amplifiers and things like that, I need to be licensed in some way. Mm -hmm. So I'm operating under a ham radio license, so I'm you know, personal oh, experimentation. Nice. And all I'm doing is I've got the two transmitters tuned to the same frequency so that the RFID signal is coming out of one transmitter and then every eight minutes my call sign comes out of the other transmitter. They're both on the same frequency and my call sign just overwrites the RFID transmission uh, once every eight minutes just so that I can you know, identify my station and be ham compliant. So once we've connected those two together, uh, you can see there's this little amplifier here, um, this little device in line here. This is an amplifier because the, the signal that comes out of this is very small and the signal that comes out of this is very big. So amplify this one up, attenuate this one down, and then just combine the two together. So once we've combined the two signals together, feed it into a nice big power amplifier here, and then a, a meter to just see how much power is coming out the end of it. And then this, this big gray box is just a power supply for it all. So I think at this point that's that's pretty much a, an explanation of the system. Anyone have any questions about the, the system or you know what I'm actually doing here? No? Okay, well let's see if there's someone down here so we can do a range check. He's supposedly on his way, so I guess we've got a couple of minutes. What is the world's record now? Um, as I understand it, the, the, the previous record for DEF CON was 69 feet, set in 2005 by Flexilis. Um, after that, uh, there was a chap called Ravi Papu from a company called Thing Magic. Um, he gave a, a tech talk at Google where he claimed to be able to read these tags from 213 feet. Um, with this equipment, I have read tags from 217 feet. 
Um, at the time, uh, my, my equipment is capable of far more than that. I actually hit the limits of the, the, the field that I was testing on before I hit the limits of my equipment. I was actually getting reflections from the end of the, the, the test range that was swamping my signal. And how do you measure?